as a Christian, um, I don't profess to to have it all together. To um, to I don't take these stances from from a self righteous point of view. But at the same time, um, it's important to be virtuous, um, to have things that you stand for. To and and when I speak of that, there, there's certain hills in, in in my faith and in my belief that I will die on, and and my faith in general is something that I will die for. So um, yeah, when I was put in the position to to wear the pride jersey, um, the whole LGB. Uh, flag and, and ideology and everything they stand for goes against everything I believe in. Um, so I can't in good conscience as a man, as a man of faith, um, I couldn't wear it regardless of, of the repercussions, regardless of the outcry, um, regardless of the offence. Um, and you know, it's, it's not hateful to do that. It's not hateful to stand for, for what I believe in. We quietly took a stance against it and um, I don't regret any of it. You spoke earlier, and I've just made this connection now, when, when you lost your father and you gave it all to God and you said, God, if NRL is something you want me to do, mm. open up some doors for me. But if it's not something you want me to do, then that's fine too. Yeah. And so you've been c- very consistent with the fact that whilst N- the NRL and football has given you so many blessings, it is not the be-all and end-all of your life. You might be a player for the Manly Seagulls, but you're a man of God first. Yeah, I'm actually happy you said that. You know, like it's it's um, it's a dangerous trap to start seeking God and, and worshiping God for for what He can give you, uh, and not for who He is. Um, being people that are chasing after His His hand before you're chasing after His heart, um, that's very dangerous. Um, and then uh, with that. Is like where where's my identity? Is my identity in being a, a football player first, or is it in being a, a, a son of God, a um, a Christian, um, a man of God? Um, where's your identity lie? Mm-hmm. And you have to start asking all those kind of questions when you're put in a compromising position like this. Mm-hmm. Um, can I, as a as a man of God, wear something that I know upsets him? Can I go against my beliefs and just and just compromise? Um, those are all the things that I had to consider um, when we took our stance. Mm. And you mentioned identity, mm. and this is one of the things that's pushed so hard that people have fallen into the trap that your sexual orientation or the gender that mm. that you um, identify as and things like that mm. that's your that is your identity. Mm. And so many people have fallen into that trap. Um, but like you mentioned, your identity is actually, and all of our identity is actually in God. It's in our Creator. Yeah. Our identity, at, at its deepest, at its core, is that we're a son or a daughter of God. Yeah. And it doesn't go. Uh, it, every other um, thing in our life, the fact that I'm Lebanese, that I'm a man, yeah. things like that, it makes up the person I am. Yeah. But it's not my deepest identity. That's it. That's in God. It's in the Creator, and that's why you find so many people who have everything that the world tells you that you need to be happy yeah. and they're still unhappy. They're still searching for something. It's because they, mm. they have no idea of their own identity because they don't know God. Um, and so because of that trap, when you take a stance against something like the LGBT community mm. um, and their ide- ideologies, you become someone who hates the person. That's right, yeah. So what, what, do, you, what do you have to say about that? Because you, mm. you were attacked quite a bit about that about being a hate and we all are when we take a stance against it yeah. um but obviously as a as a public figure yeah. um do you do you hate <laughs> do you hate them do you, you know? yeah yeah i know exactly what, what you're saying with that um um i guess i'll i'll start by saying i guess i'll i'll start by saying that growing up do you remember back in the day where where young kids uh whether boy or girl used to be encouraged it used to be applauded to be people that stand for things that they believe in, be virtuous, be strong, be uncompromising. That used to be applauded. That used to be encouraged in our communities. And now, for some reason, it's gone the whole opposite way. If you're not supporting the agendas that are being pushed, if you're not compromising your beliefs, you're hateful. 
Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's gone. It's gone a full three sixty, and I'm not gonna fall into the trap. And I and I'm very vocal about this. I'm not gonna fall into the trap of um, if you're standing for that, then you hate that lot of people because it's not. Mm. You know, mm. like as as I premised before we started the chat, you can stand for the things you believe in and not be hateful. You can stand for the things you believe in and still be loving and not discriminative. And like I felt like we done that. That that's all that we done. Yeah. And like you said, um, in terms of identity, um, and they wanted us to wear the rainbow flag. Like if you want to delve deeper into it, um, they've taken a symbol from the Bible in, in Genesis and they've used that as as their flag and they've they've kind of taken the piss out of something that means so much to us as Christians. God's promise, you know, they're using that as their flag. They're talking about like gender ideology. You can identify however you want. Yeah. It goes against everything that we we know. It's, it's just like the world's losing its mind. Yeah. You can identify as a cat. You've got guys identifying as females and going smashing girls' sports. Like, yeah. where do we draw the line? Because yeah. it's going to get crazier and crazier. And people are worried about speaking out like this because if you do speak out against the crazy left, like, you're a good chance of getting cancelled. Yeah. But like yeah. I said, I'm not worried about it because when I make my stance, I know I'm not saying I hate you and I've got it all together, so I'm making the stance because I'm self-righteous. Yeah. And I know I'm making, making this stance for God. We need to like stand firm, like it says in the Word. And I'm not worried about the outcry. You mentioned um, before, like if you're not being persecuted, you're probably not making a stand for God. Like, that's right. If you're people pleasing, then great, they will pat you on the back. <laughs> well, that's all right. God won't pat you on the back. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd much, much rather, um, uh, is it Timothy? Or it speaks about the New Testament. Like, the approval of God is, is much more important to me than the approval of man. So, Amen. Yeah, everything that that, that flag represents, I couldn't, um, in good conscience, um, wear that and endorse that and encourage that. So how was that? thrust upon you as players like what what actually happened can you speak to that yeah yeah so we just um we we weren't given much notice we we're probably only given seven days ten days notice actually to um that we we're gonna wear a, a jersey with the pride flag on it and like i immediately rang up my coach and it was this has at the time a man that I, I i really respect and love even to this day and i told him hey you you know i can't wear that and he said yep i understand and then a few of the other boys found out about it, and they were like, look, I'm not comfortable wearing it too. So then we got chatting. Um, there was a bit of an emergency meeting in the boardroom, and um, they kind of kind of pitched to us what what they see uh, that symbol representing on our jersey. Um, and they said, hey, we want to give you guys 24 hours to think about it. And in the boardroom, like we kind of said to the boys, hey, you guys make all your decision for yourself. Don't be influenced by each other. Don't feel like we have to p pack mentality this. Come to peace with your decision. I said, like, I don't need 24 hours. Like, my, my mind's made up. I'm not playing. Um, I won't play in that jersey. We, we had some alternatives that we tried to work. We, for whatever reason, we couldn't get other jerseys organised. Um, so I said, yeah, look, I don't need 24 hours. Um, my mind's made up. One of the other boys, um, he said the same thing. His mind's made up, and I think... Once the boys had a good think about it, they um, they were on the same page. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And there was a uh, there was a potential debutant mm. that round two, and he put God before mm. his opportunity to play first grade. Yeah, that's that's something I really like to talk about too. Actually, um, I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning him, um, Ray Vainga. Um, he was called in to replace one of us seven who were. Uh, pulled out of the game. He hadn't played NRL yet. So he's a young boy from West Auckland. He went to the same high school as me in West Auckland. Um, you know, had a had a rough upbringing as well, you know, to be fair. Um, like I said earlier, it's pretty hard to make that out of there and have the opportunity to be doing what we're doing. And he got given his NRL debut that week. And he turned it down and put God first. And I told Ray, I said, man, I have that much respect for you. Like, even just talking about it now, like, mm. he turned down his dream, everything he worked for, what he moved over to Australia for. He left his family in New Zealand to, to pursue this, and he still put God first. Man, so much love for Ray, so much respect for him. Um, I love that that staunchness in the spirit. Like These days we need that. Yeah. 
And you hear often times about people doing whatever it takes to climb the ladder of success. Mm. And then you've got you fine young men who, as you said before, this isn't an issue of hate. Mm. But that's what unfortunately the mainstream media turned it into. You, I know you love your brothers and sisters because mm. that's our commandment from God mm. is to love one another. Yeah. But we can still love one another and have a disagreement. I agree, yeah. And I think we've lost that in our culture today yeah. where you and I can just sit across a table from one another mm. and say, you know what, bro, I love you, but I don't agree with this. Yeah. But that seems to be not acceptable to the mainstream media and the culture whereby you just have to say yes and affirm everything that someone wants to stand for. Now, you lose mm. yourself as a person. So to that young man who basically sacrificed his opportunity to play in the best league in the world, yeah. Mm. Yeah. thanks be to God for his, his fortitude, his strength, his courage. Yeah. Man of God first. Yeah, yeah. And like, mm. I'll go on to say, like, he ended up playing in RL. Uh, you know, God ended up opening that door for him. He had a really good year for us, just gone too. He played some really good football, man. Um, so, you know, like, God works um, all things for good for those who love the Lord. Mm. And Amen. he put God first, and, and I'm just so happy to see how well he's doing now. Um, through challenge and adversity, man, I'm, I'm real proud of him. That's awesome, man. And like you said, God always provides, man. That's, mm. that's amazing. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. For more clips like this, check out the videos to your right. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, comment, all the good stuff as Father Ben says. And don't be afraid to go against the grain.